Imagine a world where the power of the atom, once harnessed for the betterment of humanity, is instead wielded as a terrifying weapon of destruction. A world where a single uncontrolled chain reaction can unleash unimaginable devastation, leaving behind a legacy of fear and uncertainty. This is the chilling story of the Demon Core, a plutonium sphere that nearly brought about the end of the world on August 21st of 1945. In this video, we'll delve into the terrifying events that unfolded on that fateful day, exploring the science behind the Demon Core and the lessons that can be learned from this near catastrophe. We'll examine the circumstances that led to the Demon Core accident, the role of human error, and the limitations of early nuclear technology. We'll also discuss the potential consequences of a full-scale nuclear explosion in the heart of Los Alamos, New Mexico, and the devastating impact it would have had on the world. We'll also discuss the enduring legacy of the Demon Core, its impact on scientific research, nuclear safety protocols, and our understanding of the immense power of the atom. And who knows? Perhaps by exploring the chilling tale of the Demon Core, we can gain a deeper appreciation for the delicate balance between scientific advancement and the potential for catastrophic consequences. The Demon Core was a plutonium sphere that played a pivotal role in the Manhattan Project, the US nuclear weapon development effort during World War II. Despite its intended use as the core of a third atomic bomb, the war ended before it could be deployed. As a result, the Demon Core was retained for testing and potential future use. Unfortunately, the core was involved in two fatal radiation accidents at the Los Alamos Laboratory in New Mexico. In both incidents, scientists were conducting experiments to determine how close the core was to criticality, the point at which a nuclear chain reaction becomes self-sustaining. However, accidental configurations led to criticality, exposing the scientists to lethal doses of radiation. Harry Dalian and Louis Slotin, the physicists involved in the accidents, tragically succumbed to acute radiation syndrome. The core measured 8.9 centimeters in diameter and weighed 6.2 kilograms. The plutonium used in the Demon Core was a plutonium gallium alloy, chosen for its stability and ease of handling. This alloy allowed the plutonium to be hot pressed into the desired spherical shape without undergoing phase transformations that could compromise its integrity. To protect the plutonium from corrosion, the sphere was coated with a layer of nickel. However, the sudden surrender of Japan rendered the bomb unnecessary and the core remained at Los Alamos. The Demon Core was designed to operate at a state of negative 5 cents, meaning it was very close to criticality but not yet self-sustaining. To ensure its safety, strict protocols were in place to prevent accidental configurations that could lead to a chain reaction. However, human error and a series of unfortunate events led to the first two tragic accidents. On August 21st of 1945, physicist Harry Dalian was conducting experiments to measure the core's proximity to criticality. He was using neutron reflective tungsten carbide bricks to gradually increase the core's reactivity. While attempting to add another brick, Dalian accidentally dropped it into the core, causing it to become supercritical. The sudden burst of neutron radiation exposed Dalian to a fatal dose of radiation. Despite medical efforts, he succumbed to acute radiation syndrome 25 days later. The accident also exposed security guard Robert J. Himmerly, who was present in the laboratory at the time. While Himmerly received a lower dose of radiation than Dalian, the exposure contributed to his eventual death from acute myelogenous leukemia 33 years later. The Demon Core's legacy of destruction was far from over. Just a few years after the first accident, another tragic incident occurred at Los Alamos. This time, physicist Louis Slotin was leading an experiment to demonstrate the core's proximity to criticality. Slotin and his colleagues were using a technique that involved manually positioning two beryllium half spheres around the core. By carefully adjusting the distance between the halves, they could control the neutron reflection and monitor the core's reactivity. However, Slotin's unorthodox method of using a screwdriver to main a gap between the halves increased the risk of accidental criticality. On May 21st, 1946, during a demonstration of the experiment, Slotin's screwdriver slipped, allowing the top reflector to fall into place. The core instantly went supercritical, releasing a powerful burst of neutron radiation. Slotin was shielded from most of the radiation by his body position, but he received a fatal dose. He died nine days later from acute radiation poisoning. Other scientists present in the laboratory were also exposed to radiation, including Alvin C. Graves, who was standing behind Slotin. While Graves survived the immediate effects of the radiation, he later developed health problems and died 19 years later. 
The tragic accidents involving the Demon Core had a profound impact on the scientific community and led to a renewed focus on radiation safety. Extensive medical studies were conducted to assess the long-term health effects on those exposed to the radiation. A summary of these studies revealed the following. Louis Slaughton received a lethal dose of radiation and died nine days later from acute radiation syndrome. Alvin C. Graves survived the immediate effects of the radiation but later developed health problems and died of heart failure 19 years after the accident. Samuel Allen Klein refused to participate in medical studies and was prevented from obtaining his own medical records. He died in 2001 at the age of 81. Marion Edward Chase Leakey died of acute myelocytic leukemia 19 years after the accident. Dwight Smith Young died of a plastic anemia and bacterial endocarditis 29 years after the accident. Raymer Edgar Schreiber survived the accident and died of natural causes 52 years later. Theodore Perlman survived the accident and was reported to be in good health as of 1978. His subsequent fate is uncertain. Private Patrick Joseph Cleary received a lower dose of radiation but was killed in action during the Korean War. Paul Long and another unidentified machinist were exposed to radiation but did not receive medical treatment. In response to these tragic events, hands-on criticality experiments were discontinued and remote-controlled machines and TV cameras were developed to allow scientists to conduct such experiments safely from a distance. The Demon Core, once known simply as Rufus, became a chilling reminder of the dangers associated with nuclear materials and the importance of stringent safety protocols. The Demon Core was originally intended for the use of Operation Crossroads nuclear tests, a series of atomic bomb detonations conducted in the Bikini Atoll in 1946. However, the two criticality accidents significantly delayed its deployment. Following the accidents, the Demon Core required a period of cooling to allow its radioactivity to decrease to safe levels. Additionally, scientists needed to assess the impact of fission products within the core, as some of these elements could interfere with the desired nuclear reaction. While the other two cores were shipped to Bikini Atoll for the Abel and Baker tests, the Demon Core was scheduled for a later test, provisionally named Charlie. However, the unexpected level of radioactivity resulting from the underwater Baker test and the difficulty of decontaminating the target warships led to the cancellation of the Charlie test. Ultimately, the Demon Core was melted down in the summer of 1946 and its material was recycled for use in other nuclear weapons. The tragic history of the Demon Core serves as a stark reminder of the dangers associated with nuclear materials and the importance of handling them with extreme caution. We've dove into the chilling history of the Demon Core. The Demon Core's involvement in two fatal radiation accidents highlights the risks involved in scientific research, even when conducted with the utmost care. The legacy of these accidents continues to shape our understanding of radiation hazards and the development of safer nuclear practices. While the Demon Core itself was eventually melted down and its material recycled, its enduring impact on the scientific community and the world at large cannot be ignored. The tragic story of the Demon Core serves as a cautionary tale, urging us to approach the power of the atom with respect, responsibility, and a deep understanding of the potential consequences. As we continue to explore the frontiers of scientific knowledge, it is imperative that we remain vigilant in our pursuit of safety and avoid repeating the mistakes of the past. Demon Core's legacy reminds us that even the most promising advancements can have unintended consequences, and that the pursuit of progress must always be tempered with a sense of responsibility and a commitment to minimizing risk. Thank you everyone for watching. My name's The Big Why. Don't forget to drop a like, and if you're new to the Why Not family, a follow. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.